What do you call a casserole that sings? A tuna casserole. Welcome back to Berry Berry Life. Today we're making green bean casserole. This is a perfect recipe for the holidays, especially for family gatherings. So let's get started. First we'll start by preparing the green beans. We usually get a large bag from Costco and this two pound bag is perfect for this recipe. We'll simp off the ends and cut them in halves. You can do this one at a time or group them in a bunch like this. Fun facts. Green beans are also known as string beans or snap beans. They are typically harvested when the pods are still immature. They are believed to have originated in Peru. When buying green beans, we usually get the large bag and typically prep and freeze them to be used in different dishes. After the green beans, we'll slice the onions. Sweet onions are the best to make French onion soup. The extra sugar helps with caramelization. What do you call an onion that's always telling jokes? A punion. Usually for French onions, we prefer slicing them into rounds. But today we'll use the radial cut, which is pole to pole. It helps the onions stay more intact during cooking. Sweet onions have a shorter shelf life, so you have to store them in a cool dry place with good air circulation. Once all the vegetables are cut, we'll bring a pot of water to boil and add a teaspoon of salt. Then throw in the green beans and boil them for about 2-3 to three minutes. The blanching process helps to brighten and soften the green beans. It also helps to slow down vitamin loss during cooking. Wow, look at that color. We want to preserve that color throughout the cooking process. After the green beans, we'll caramelize the onions. To a large pot over medium low heat, we'll add a couple of tablespoons of butter and toss in our mountain of onions. Don't worry if this looks like a lot of onions, they'll cook down quite a bit. This process takes about 15 minutes. It's low and slow. The burnt bits sticking to the bottom are called fond and can be used to make au jus. At the end, the caramelized onion should look something like this. With the vegetables cooked, now we'll make the white sauce. To make this, we'll start with a roux. That's equal parts butter and flour. Keep the temperature to a medium low to prevent burning. We'll cook the roux to a light color and then slowly add in cold milk. We add the milk slowly to prevent clumps. This white sauce is called a bechamel in French, which is one of the five mother sauces of French cuisine. Once we've incorporated about a third of the milk, we'll add the remaining. With the foundation of the sauce formed, now we'll tackle the taste. We'll add some ground black pepper. We like to use a coarse grind and some salt for seasoning. And for flavoring, we'll add some cayenne pepper for a little bit of heat and some freshly ground nutmeg because it's nutty, earthy, and slightly sweet to round out the flavor. Why did the nutmeg go to therapy? Because it had a grating day. And for the herb, we're using thyme that we've dried at home. We'll bring everything to a gentle boil and allow the sauce to thicken to a nappe consistency, which means the sauce will have the consistency to stick to the back of a spoon. With the sauce ready, we'll take it off the heat and allow it to cool. And lastly, we'll prepare some breadcrumbs for the top. In a small bowl, we'll add 2 3rd cups of panko breadcrumbs, and then drizzle in 2 tablespoons of melted butter. We'll give it a gentle mix and allow the breadcrumbs to absorb the butter. This will help them from burning in the oven and allowing them to get the GBD. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button and let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more great content. With all the ingredients prepared, now we can assemble the casserole. We'll start with a layer of French onions. We'll add half the onions and spread them out evenly. We didn't grease the pan, we just forgot to do it. But in the end, it didn't make a difference. If you think the food is going to stick to your pan, feel free to grease it. You're the Peter to your pan. Then add half of our green beans and again spread them out evenly. Now we'll ladle on half of our sauce. And next, some shredded Gruyere cheese. I'm no scientist, but there's definitely a chemical reaction that makes you happy when shredding cheese and piling it on into a dish like this. Then we'll repeat the cycle. We'll add the second half of our green beans. The green beans are so vibrant, not mushy at all. The rest of the white sauce? It's like a vegetable lasagna without the pasta. 
Now the rest are our French onions. Then more of that Gruyere cheese. And don't be stingy. You can save that resolution for January 1st. Then we like to season with more salt and black pepper. You don't want boring vegetables. Boring, translation, unseasoned. Then on the top, we'll add our panko breadcrumbs. The butter will help them turn golden brown and crispy and prevent them from burning. And what breadcrumb crust would be complete without some grated parmesan? With the casserole prepared, it's ready to go into the oven. We'll preheat the oven to 375. Once the oven is at temperature, we'll place the casserole in the oven and bake for about 25 minutes. Then 25 minutes later, it's ready and smells amazing. The crust is nice and crispy. We'll go for the corner. Love the crunch of that crust. Ideally, you want to allow the casserole to cool a little. This helps to bind the ingredients together and it's not soupy. This is the consistency we're looking for. Love the way the crust sticks to the green beans. Oh man, I cannot wait to dig in. The green beans are still green and have a nice crisp bite to them. Not mushy at all. There you have it, French onion green bean casserole. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out our holiday recipes or our holidays recipe playlist. Have a wonderful holiday and see you in the next episode of Berry Berry Life. Enjoy!